again, I'm Henry T, and welcome to our special show that's all about inspiration. Meeting special creative people, a big part of it. Everybody somewhere in their life, somebody told them, hey, you can be somebody someday if you do this, 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 and this. Today we have a filmmaker. Wow, he's gonna bless us with his presence, his experience, and take notes if you have the same aspirations that you want to make film and create movies and bring that creative side out of you because today Kenneth Segura Noel is with us, an experienced man in this industry, and we're honored to have you here. Kenneth Segura Noel, how are you? It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's uh, an honor. Man, you've been around the block in this business and experienced all sorts of variations of filmmaking. Right. And I'm gonna ask first, have you been an actor as well? I actually have acted in a few a few of my own shows and a, a few uh, extra parts here and, uh, of commercials. So yes, I've been an actor. I don't consider myself an actor, but- a Born and raised I'm, New Mexican, the, the very popular film, Easy Rider, with Peter Fonda. Right. Now you and Peter became close friends, <laughs> hooked up in creativity. Yeah. If you don't mind, let's take us way back when, in the beginning days sure. of your creativity. Well, I was born and raised in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and uh, I had an opportunity to go and watch them filming Easy Rider. Uh, and at the time, uh, it sparked an interest. You know, what is this process? Uh, so I got to meet some of the people involved in the technical side, um, and it was very exciting. I was an extra and easy writer. Uh, fast forward about six years, uh, New Mexico introduced a film incentive program under Governor Cardo, and I was at Highlands at University. So I immediately jumped into that and said, what's this all about? I got to work on a film with uh, uh, Martin Sheen and Linda Blair, Wow. Uh, and uh, I met a young, uh, a young man, I met a man there that was, was a production manager, and he hired me as an extra, and I, I got to drive Linda Blair and, and uh, Martin Sheen to and from the hotel, and a couple of trips to Albuquerque, yeah. but he said, if you ever come to L.A., uh, look me up, and his name was Brian Frankish, and Brian Frankish went on to produce Field of Dreams and, and many, many wow. big films. So little did he know that three weeks later I packed my uh, 68 Dodge van and uh, was headed to Hollywood. And when I got there, um, he put me to work. He gave me an assignment and he was working on King Kong, the movie. So he sent me up and down the coast, taking pictures of the coast because they were still looking for a, a location. And this, this led to my career. I went on and I got a college degree did some law school, did some business management, and became a producer. I, uh, I built a studio in Sacramento, California. But I always had that, that when I was driving out of the state of New Mexico, I, and you know, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, I'm driving my 68 Dodge, I said, when I turn 50, I'm coming home. And I spent my 50th birthday wow. in East Mountains, uh, barbecuing and celebrating with family. And, uh, so I just transferred what I was doing there to here, and I'm producing films and television, uh, set up a distribution company to distribute films. We got some great news this morning. Five of the short films that, we, uh, that we're distributing uh, will be uh, uh, shown on the Shorts Movie Channel in the U.S. and Europe. Nice. So it, it's an exciting career. Way back when, who told you, little Kenneth, you can be somebody someday. Uh -oh. You got to do this, this, and this. Discipline yourself. And if you follow these rules, you'll right. be a success. Who told you that? Well, I was raised by my grandma. And my grandma had a philosophy. She said, you can do whatever you want. And she says, but remember, education is very important. Because they can take your possessions, but they can't take your knowledge. And, and I've always believe that. You know, I like learning. I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly on the internet and, and keeping ahead of the industry, whatever I'm doing. Uh, and that's what it is. It's, it's about, um, there was um, 
college professor that taught a class, and it was, you are what you are, okay? If you say when you're small, I'm a doctor, you're a doctor. You're just a doctor at the earliest stages. Wow. And if you keep believing that, I'm a doctor, but now I'm a doctor in med school. Now I'm a doctor in residency. Now I'm a doctor in practice. You're a doctor. Mm -hmm. So you are what you say you are. And, and you know, it change, you can change along the way. Might you be a doctor of creativity? Uh, what is that element, that intangible, that's inside of you that makes you create, that gives you that imagination? Is it intangible or can you put your finger on it that's inside of you? Well, I, I, I come from a family of musicians. I come from, from a family of artists. So I, a lot of that is embedded in, in your culture. Uh, if you are a, if you come from a family that they're they're Native American weavers, you become a weaver. That's in, in, entrenched in you. Uh, I, it's always very sad that the schools don't have music programs, because music is is one of those things. You know, music and golf. I say, are are when I'm eight years old, I can be playing music and going and playing golf, right? Wow. So those things keep you going. They, you know, and, and they, they add a lot to keeping your blood, when you get old, keeping your blood pressure down. But I think that's what, what, where, where the creativity came from. When you think about a film that you're working on from the origin, yeah. what are the mandates to put something like that? So sophisticated right. that we all enjoy when we go to the movie theater, but it starts uh -huh. somewhere. Where does it begin? Well, it, be, it begins with the initial idea, and the idea can come from a, an experience in life. It can come from a story. You can be driving down the road and, and witness something. Uh, and once you get that inspiration, now you have to put it down on paper. And I was, at a, I was in San Francisco uh, presenting to angels, and I was telling people what I did, and angels, money, money angels. And the woman got up and she says, what you are is you're a serial entrepreneur. She says, because as a producer, every time you start a project, it's like starting a new business. So once you've got the concept and the idea, you need to put the business together. You need, then you need to be putting all the elements together that have to come together to make that film, to make that TV program, uh, whatever, if you're recording, Got to bring all the musicians, you know, all the elements together. Wow. I look at you as being such a versatile man <laughs> in your field. You mm. can write, you can obviously produce and mm. be a director, but I know that your mind edits these things. You can see the final product. Right. And maybe you've edited the product before its conclusion. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you work to get to that final stage, but... Mm. Help us there. Do you have to see the end well, before you create the beginning? Right. And when you start off as a, as a producer, you have a vision of what, what you want to produce. In our business, we say a movie or a TV program is made three times. The first time is when you write it on paper and, and you have that vision of what it's going to look like. The next time the movie's made is when you're shooting it. And what changes is that there are so many elements that are variables. And these variables make you change direction. Uh, sometimes, oh, we have this scene in a church, but we can't get the church. Well, what if we put the same scene at a school? You know, so you have to adjust to those, those type of things. And then the final time the, the film or television is made is in the editing room. Because mm -hmm. you're sitting there and you're looking and, oh, we shot this beautiful scene but it doesn't fit anywhere in the movie to make the storyline continue, to make it a, a, a concise story. And so as a producer, you're following all these processes. Uh, and it, it, through the different stages, early stage, you're working with the writer. That's why it's very hard to have the writer on the set. Because mm -hmm. the writer has a vision, but there are too many variables where the director has to change things, the producer has to change things, that's very hard. Wow, the rapport with the writer and the director, do they 
conflict one another's personality or their presence or their skills? What did you mean by that? Well, when I have a separate writer and a separate director, I usually don't allow the, they, they talk about the vision before we get on the set. Once we get on the set, I don't want the writer on because they're interfering with the director's now vision of it. Plus, they might not understand, well, that's not why I wanted that scene in that church. And we have to say, well, you know, we, we've changed it a little. <laughs> but um, a lot of times I work with the, uh, the director, it was both the director and the writer. Wow. And when you do that, then they are rewriting it, and they're still the writer on the set. Incredible. You know, we've got a lot more to talk about, and we're at halftime right now okay. of this great feature with you. When we come back on the other side, I want to find out what you're literally working on right now, your aspirations, because I look at you as a fired up young man in the business. Well, thank I don't you. care what your age is, that's thank irrelevant. You. I love your, your spirit. And I want to know where that spirit's heading That's in it. the near future. Thank you. And we'll find out what really drives this man. His faith and what makes him so affirmative about what he's doing, present and future. We'll be back with Kenneth Segura Noel right here on KZQ Channel 32. Don't you dare miss what he's going to say. It's going to help you. Believe me, stay right there. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. This program has been sponsored in part by Butterfield Jewelers, located at 2411 San Pedro Northeast, offering appraisals, handcrafted jewelry, gold and jewelry buying, and jewelry and watch repair. Butterfield Jewelry is owned and operated by Mike, Teresa, and Bernie Butterfield. Butterfield Jewelry, 505-884-5747. I'm Henry T, and today we have filmmaker, movie maker, if you will, Kenneth Segura Noel, who has got some stuff under his hat right now. He's working on some projects. He, you learned all about his creativity, his inspiration. Now let's find out if it's not too private. Kenneth, welcome back, by the way. My goodness, it's good to have you. What are you working on? Well, I'm working on a television pilot uh, we shot a pilot last week year and uh, working to get it distributed. It's called Almost Americans. And Almost Americans is a sitcom. 
It's a Native American teaching citizenship class. And then they, uh, the, the students all work in an Indian casino. So it's the wow. unique relationship between a Native American, American history, cultures, the, the conflict of cultures in, 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 the, in the comic ways that things are happening. Uh, and and uh, we have Jerry Bednob, who was in 40 Year Old Virgin. We have Stephen Michael Casada, who's an uh, incredible comic. Yes. Uh, of course, Mark Yaffe, Samuel Bede, the Catalina Parish. It's a very good, good, good group. Um, a project that I'm working on that you will be interested uh, that's set for 2018 is a feature film on the fighter Jack Johnson. Wow. Okay, little, little, it's little, it's not known that Jack Johnson's last fight in the United States occurred in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Uh, in 1912, when New Mexico became a state, and when he was at the end of the, his career, he came to fight here because he needed the money. And right after that, they, they, uh, they, they uh, convicted him of transporting white men, women interstate. And that white woman happened to be his wife. So after that, he fled the country to France. Wow. And so um, I always had that. You know, there's some New Mexico stories that really, really intrigue me. That's one of them. You know, uh, a city bankrolled their their whole money and every future by bringing that fight to to Las Vegas, and he was emotionally in turmoil when he oh, came to do it. How uh, unfair! That yeah. was his wife, right, right? And he got punished yeah. for bringing his wife with him. No, no, he had moved. Ever he had been? Uh, well, he was in Illinois. In Chicago, so when he went to fight in different states, he would take her with him, and they said, "Hey, you're transporting a white woman uh, through interstate. So it's against the law." Well, I'm gonna again say how unfair. <laughs> yeah, very unfair. Uh, it, but he was a, also a very flamboyant yeah. uh, character, a big, you know, big heavyweight. Um, there's there's footage of the actual fight on YouTube. If if you go to Las Vegas. Put Las Vegas Jack Johnson. You can actually watch the fight. Wow! And, and there's a group. how flamboyant was he? Uh, well, a lot of people say that uh, Muhammad Ali, his whole caricature was based on Jack Johnson. So that's the best really? competition. Yeah. Uh, I'm the greatest comparison. of all times. How <laughs> still pretty? Right. Oh, very good. Well, you're you're a great sports historian. Well, you know. Uh, I'm going to ask you straight up, how good a fighter was Jack Johnson? Well, uh, he was so good he couldn't get fights, you know, and so uh, even towards the end of the career, he couldn't find fights because, uh, those, well, the Great White Hope's all about Jack. Yeah. Who's going to fight Jack Johnson? Well, see, the story itself is compelling. Right. Enough to us to use our imagination now. Yeah. Where are you going with this? What are you going to conclude when it's all said and done? Or is there any way to ever have a creative person like you make a conclusion in advance? Uh, we have different alternative endings to the, to the screenplay. Um, one of the things is uh, part of the character of the movie is the city of Las Vegas. Wow. At the time, Las Vegas was, you know, mm. uh, it had the Castaneda, the Fred Harvey Hotel, yeah. the, the big, you know, the castle, which is the World College, was a big Fred Harvey Hotel. And that, you know, the interesting thing in the story, Jack Johnson fought uh, uh, Flynn, who was, a, who, was, who was a sparring partner. He was actually Jack Johnson's sparring partner in the fire fight before. But when they brought him to the fight, they put him in the expensive hotel. And Jack Johnson came to him because he was an African American. They put him out in a farm in Watros, and Jack Johnson said, "No, I'm not going to do that." So he rented his own place where he trained, and so many people were going to watch him train. Finally, the the city said, "No, no, you have to train at the Castaneda." And and what would happen is, Las Vegas was the halfway point between Chicago and L.A. That's where the engineers. And the uh, the the uh, Fred Harvey girls would change out from the trains, 
So the train would stop there for four to five hours, and the people would get out, go to the Castaneda, eat. And so when the train would arrive, they would, they would do sparring out there. And it, had, it was covered all over the world. This was Jack Johnson yeah. fighting another fight in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Wow. And Las Wait. Vegas had trolley cars, and, and it, was a, it had more hotel rooms per capita than other, any other city between Chicago and, and uh, Los wow. Angeles. Incredible. Right. You know, uh, a big part of filmmaking is getting the films funded. Where do you get the money? How big a worry, how big of, uh, of a plan is that? Before you get started, do you need funding with every film you make? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't uh, go into the film without the funding. But we fund different stages of the, of the film. So the development where we're putting together the, 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 the screenplays and we're attaching the directors and we're attaching uh, the, the stars and bringing in all the creative people is funded. The production itself is a separate funding and we, we fund the post-production separately and then we get involved with a little bit of the funding uh, in the distribution. Now, the smaller projects I'm doing, I'm distributing through our own New Mexico distribution company called Turquoise Trail Releasing. Wow. And we just, uh, we, we, uh, we had signed 18 shorts to represent. Uh, we just got new word this morning that six of them have been picked up for, for showing on the Shorts Movie Channel, which is uh, U.S. and European. My goodness. Now, I have aspirations of doing films. And I, I don't make any fun of it. I want to do films. I'm a filmmaker. I've done television. I do features. I've done documentaries. Now I want to graduate those skills. How do I do it? Well, mentoring is the best, best teacher uh, in this industry. So get, get together with other filmmakers that are making or uh, producing projects at different levels. And, and work on their projects and, and, and work your way up. Uh, so much of the money depends on the people you have attached to the project. Uh, so um, that, that really is very important. So who's gonna direct? Now, if you're doing a documentary, you're the director probably. You're looking at directing your old stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I look at packaging, if we don't have a director that's really, really strong, what we'll try to do is we'll put actors around them that are very, very strong. So me as a producer, my job is to do that. Okay, our director's not very strong. I need to go find strong actors that when the investors look at it, they say, oh, this movie will, will sell because people will buy it because of the actors. Um, Europe is very driven by who's the director. America's driven by who are the stars. Wow. You know, so... That becomes a real hard balance to do because, um, you know, you have to depend on sales, European sales and foreign sales to get your money back for your investors. How much influence, how much attractiveness is just the storyline itself? The story of this person, wow, no yeah. kidding? Is that enough to sell somebody like yourself that this can be a success? When I, when I look at a project, that, that's how, how, if I have all the right elements together, how sellable it is, who do I sell it to? You know, and a lot of times, uh, who I sell it to is, is a moving target because those companies, the people that are in there, change so often. So I might say, oh, this movie is really great for this, this uh, network or this distributor. By the time I get the movie done, they're, they may be gone. So, but then I follow that person to where they went. Uh, In your solitude, when you need to be alone and you need to find that strong creativity, put business together, the, the actual film, where do you go? What do you do? What's that experience like? I, I pick up my guitar. In fact, my nickname for my guitar is Prozac. Uh, and I sit there and I play music. And uh, I, I have literally taken my blood pressure and say, picked up my guitar, played for half an hour, went and took my blood pressure again, and it's way down. Uh, I love music. 
my first love is music. See, I write songs. To me, when you write a song, that's the greatest art form there is. And let me tell you what. When I write a song, you sing it, you honor me. And, I, and, and multiple bands can record it, multiple singers. Or, or, or you're going down the road and your song's playing on the radio and people are singing along with it. You know, I, I love that. I, I, I played uh, at a senior citizen um, dance uh, yesterday because I, I love that. Because I grew up with my grandma. You know, I was around old people all the time. And we are playing songs and, and they're dancing and they're lipping the words to, to that Freddie Fender song. Yeah. You know, or, you know, and, and I have a way of tricking them. And it's a, it's, I always play like Freddie Fender and then I say, play one of my songs. I say, and this one I wrote, but I, let's see if you remember it. And here are the words. After a while, they're, they're lipping the song with you and it's, it's great. But he, I think each individual has to find their space where they do that. Some people go read, some people run. Uh, you know, you have to find that space. In our last 45 seconds, what do you want us to know about you and where you're going? Uh, what I want, I have a, I'm from New Mexico. And what I want from, I want to help New Mexico grow creatively and, and business-wise so that uh, people, everybody, comes back, but we got to keep people here. You know, I, I have that, that saying is that everybody comes back to New Mexico eventually. Wow. What a pleasure having you it's with us. It's a pleasure with you. You're a legend. God <laughs> bless you for being yeah, here today. Yeah. Man, and, uh, he's going to help me be a filmmaker. I can tell he doesn't know yet, but I'm going to lean on him for some of that invaluable information right. and experience that he carries so well. I'm going to bring it out of him and put it in here. You're gonna watch it happen right here. Thank you. Thank Kenneth, you. God bless you for being here today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us today, right here on KZQ Channel 32. And be with us again tomorrow morning, same place at eight o'clock. Take care. you got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523 or email Original Game Face at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.